Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. As you may have seen, the majority of the solar residential sector has been booming about Tesla Powerwall 3. I'm guilty myself. But is that the only good choice? I've been very, very critical of the industry and a lot of solar installers only selling one product. Like it's either only Solar Edge or only Emphase or only Tesla. Well, I think we have to look at some other options. And today I want to review EP Cube battery by Canadian Solar. Will this be Tesla's biggest competitor? Is one better than the other? And what are the specifications? Is there a solid winner here? We'll talk about all that and more in today's video. You know the drill, my friends. If you do like this video and find it helpful, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. I will be so, so, so grateful for any comments and all the support that you have given me. Now, before we jumped into the comparison of those two, I want to explain the basics of these products for you. Now, if you already know the difference between DC versus AC coupled battery system, feel free to just skip this part. I will make sure to, you know, include that timeline below. So both of these products are hybrid inverters, so they can charge the batteries directly from DC, eliminating some of the efficiency losses of an AC coupled system. Now, what does that mean exactly? Well, panels on the roof generate DC, direct current. Batteries store power in DC as well, while your home uses AC, the alternating current. So there has to be that conversion somewhere. For example, a grid-tied solar system with no battery will have panels on the roof paired with either a central inverter on or a microinverter system that will then convert that DC to a usable AC power. Now, when we start adding a battery system to the mix, we can either have an A, AC coupled system, and B, DC coupled system. So with the first one, with A, you have your panels connected to their inverter that will then convert DC to AC. And then you have your battery system separate with its inverter that then turns that AC back to DC to charge the battery. And then when this charging, DC back to AC. This is exactly why it has more power conversion losses because of all those trips. A good example of an AC coupled system is the Emphase battery backup because it already has microinverters on the roof. Powerwall 2 was also an AC coupled system. Now, obviously, you want to avoid as many of those losses, but some homeowners that have existing systems will just prefer to AC couple a battery if, like, for example, they already have micros already on the roof without needing to remove the microinverters from the roof and just adding extra cost for no reason. Now moving to the DC coupled system. This system allows the battery to charge directly from the panels, preventing the extra conversion and making the system more efficient. So again, panels generate DC on the roof, then that power goes to your hybrid inverter and either converts to AC to power the home or charges the battery directly with DC, avoiding those losses completely. Now, good example here would obviously be the Powerwall 3 and EPQ battery and hybrids like Solark. Now, like I said, both of these systems, both Powerwall and EP Cube, can be retrofitted into an existing system and work as an AC coupled battery. So for all of you microinverter customers, you can definitely add either of those systems as well. Now let's start comparing the two starting with the EPQ by Canadian Solar. It is a battery product by a panel manufacturer, which is not that uncommon. I am sure you have heard that name before, Canadian Solar. They have been in business since 2001 and they are definitely a very bankable, one of the most bankable companies in the solar sector period, which is of course a huge plus, especially now since they've recently also opened a panel manufacturing facility in my area, like literally 15 or 20 minutes away from Richardson, Texas. And I need to ask them so that they invite me for a tour. That would be a cool video. Yes, it would. I'm unapologetically inviting myself over Canadian Solar. <laughs> now let's go over some of the major technical features. So first thing you know when you or first thing you notice as you look at that product is that it's a modular design. So their system per one hybrid inverter ranges from 9.9 .9 kilowatt hours up to 19.9 .9 kilowatt hour in capacity. The stacks come in increments of 3.3 kilowatt hours and they're also pretty light. 
Now, what this means is that you can start with a smaller system and easily grow as, for example, funds become more available, making this a very flexible and definitely more customizable system. Now, some people just need a 9.9 .9 kilowatt hours or 20 kilowatt hours, right? Now, their main hybrid component, the inverter, connects with the battery stacks and then into the gateway. The gateway will eventually be able to take up to six units. But in most cases, you're going to have it split into two 200 amp panels where you're going to have two gateways and then you can add two, three stacks to it. So there's plenty of room to grow. Now we'll compare all of that to the Powerwall 3 in just a minute as well. Now, of course, with the capacity and the stackability, wait, is stackability even a word? I'm making this word. It's a, it's a, with its stackability, well, it comes also the increased power surge, as well as how much solar you can actually plug into the inverter itself. All right, their inverter comes in as a 7.6 kilowatts of AC power output with a 10 second surge of apparent power of 22 kVA. The inrush current is enough to start most AC units. Now, please keep in mind, and I always say that, is that starting an AC and then running the AC are two different things. The battery chemistry used is that safer lithium iron phosphate and the battery system comes with a warranty of 10 year period with 80% energy retention at year 10 and also 6,000 cycles. What EPCube did surprise me with when I recently visited their booth at InterSolar in Germany is how they had literally their battery submerged in water. And the reason why they are bragging about it is because of the high protection against high pressure water and their battery enclosure being NEMA 4X. Now, this is very important, especially for those in coastal areas that deal with long term outages due to hurricanes. Now, please keep in mind that no battery manufacturer wants you to keep your battery or recommends to keep your battery submerged in water. Now, if your solar system will be installed on the rooftop, you will also have to think about rapid shutdown, right? So with EP Cube, your options are one, Tygo, which you know I'm a pretty big fan of, or AP Smart. Tygo gives you panel level monitoring, while AP Smart will be the more cost effective option, but will not provide any monitoring. And lastly, EP Cube system does offer a generator control system, so you can either pair it with a standby generator like a whole home or a portable generator that can be used to manually jumpstart or wake up your energy storage system after prolonged power outage. That happened during bad weather because sometimes you're not even allowed to recharge your batteries from the sun during those times. And I don't know if I said it already, but it is capable of creating an off-grid system. Now, I think those are the most important points. So let's move on to the popular Tesla Powerwall 3. Tesla Powerwall comes in all in one unit. So we have our battery, our hybrid inverter, all built into one box, which seems more like a cookie cutter solution. Now, if you need bigger storage, you will have to basically just add an extra 13.5 kilowatt hours, whether you need all of that or not. So this is not a big surprise though, as Tesla has been known for making their products just fit a wider range of usages rather than being that flexible and custom solution. And again, it's not a bad thing, it's just different and like I said, less custom. Powerwall 3 allows for good expandability, just like EPQ. As of right now, you can have one gateway, can have four batteries for a total of 54 kilowatt hours of storage, but the DC expansion packs are supposed to be available at the end of this year, which would increase that capacity. Tesla AC output is at 11.5 kilowatts with a maximum continuous current of 48 amps. This baby will also be able to start the AC just like the EP Cube. Again, keep in mind that starting the battery or that your battery basically will be dead in an hour or two if you use it irresponsibly. Tesla supposedly uses LFP as well, supposedly, because they will not put that in writing on confirm and I don't like quoting Twitter or X or whatever it's called right now. So my guess is that they don't use LFB because why not brag about the safety of that battery chemistry? 
Now their warranty is a little bit lower than EP Cube at 70% retention at year 10. Powerwall 3 is also indoor and outdoor rated, and their battery enclosure rating is NEMA 3R. Now, when it comes to rooftop installations with Tesla systems, they have their own device called MCI. It's a circuit interrupter that is installed on each string. Now, it does not provide panel level monitoring or optimization. Now, you can kind of compare it to the AP Smart Rapid Shutdown device. And I asked both Tesla and Tygo about a possibility of pairing the two together, but unfortunately, both were pretty skeptical, all due to PLC, Power Line Communications, and how the rapid shutdown signals are sent to the panels. I didn't get too many specifics, but Tesla basically discouraged the idea and said, don't use anything but our own product. Now, as far as generators, Tesla does not support portable generators, but you can pair it with a standby generator. Now, it's more of a setup where it's a backup to a backup. They won't work together or at the same time, but generator can work if batteries are dead. All right, now let's just go over the major differences and features. I prepared a chart for you that I am also happy to send you via link. Just make sure to comment down below and I'll have that done for you. So. Would you say Tesla or EP Cube? Here are my personal thoughts. And again, please share your thoughts down below. So one of the major and the biggest differences here is obviously the modular design of EP Cube and the fact that it's single heaviest component is only 77 pounds. So installers, my installers definitely prefer to use the stackable batteries over the heavy ones where you need three or four people just to lift the battery. Now, EP Cube is a smaller AC inverter, so for a solar system like a 5 or a 6 kilowatts, you will be a little bit better off pairing that system properly with a hybrid that's sized to that system. Or if you, let's say, need a 17 kilowatt system, you can just stack two. EP Cube inverter. So their product is just more flexible and custom. Now with Tesla, where you have a six kilowatt system on the roof or a 17 kilowatt system on the roof, you will most likely just go with a single Powerwall 3 unit at 11.5 kilowatts AC. So again, as far as flexibility and expandability, I do really like that. But for some people that are in the 10 to 15 kilowatt range, you may be perfectly off doing a one power wall three, or if you're over 20 or 30, you know, doing the two increments of power wall three. So yes, definitely the big point here are the stacks. Now Tesla, like I mentioned before, they do like to do systems that just can fit a wider range of clients. It just cuts cost for them. So I will say that installers do like, like I said, prefer the stackability of the EP Cube. And also for you as the homeowner, if you do need a bigger or smaller kilowatt hour capacity, you can just add extra stack. And I think as of right now, the MSRP is about $1,500. Now, when it comes to surge power and the ability of those products to start AC, Tesla wins here at 48 of maximum continuous power, but the EP Cube does have that apparent power of 22 kVh, so it will also be able to start the AC. So I wouldn't really choose one or the other if that's your major, that's your main goal. Now, the warranty with both of these products are very, very good. They're also great for our outdoor use. And I do want to mention that the rapid shutdown and the panel level monitoring here, this is where I prefer EP Cube over Tesla because Tesla makes things very simple and that's not a bad thing, I have to say. But if you're one of those homeowners that want to be able to see each panel individually, just like we were taught for the last 10 years of this industry, panel level monitoring everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. So if you want to opt for that, your option will definitely be the pair of Tygo and EP Cube. Now you can see my other video where I test them against shading and you can see how much power gain you can expect. Now, if you have lots of shading and limited roof space, that will be a big plus too. But if you don't and really don't care for panel level monitoring, Tesla might be a less complicated of an option. I have to say, I like both of these products very, very much. They're very solid options. One is just more flexible and more custom, but either way you go, you will be totally fine. And I do approve of both. Martina approves. <laughs> I did not mention pricing here, but I do hope that 
I'm, I'll make another comparison video here, or maybe even like an installation video of a Tesla or an EPCube system. That would be a pretty cool video to make. Let me know if you would like to see that down in the comments. Thank you again so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts. Did I mention the points that matter to you? What did I miss? Let me know down in the comments and I will see you in my next video. Bye.